who's winning 2024 and my focus today is going to be Uttarakhand the state which has 10 Lok Sabha constituencies what has been the people's verdict in terms of how they view which are the politicians that have fared well who did who do they think is going to form the next government who do they think is going to fight the 20 who's going to win the 2024 lok sabha elections let's quickly take a look we came up with a set of five questions for our audiences for our poll takers to take this survey and these are the results let's start from the first question who is your biggest issue what is your biggest issue in the lok sabha elections well large percentage of the people who have taken this poll say that 39.22% of them say that it is unemployment that is in fact the biggest issue for them in the lok sabha election and the contest that is being fought by political parties well development comes at number 2 at 26.45% corruption at 14.14% inflation at 10.77% and none of these options are at 9.42 percent quickly taking a look at the second question where uh, uh, the survey takers have responded the question on what basis will you cast your vote in the lok sabha election well it is the work and work that speaks alone for political parties and their leaders 55.55% which is a resounding percentage of you who have voted that they will be voting for the candidate for the political party on the basis of the work that they have accomplished in the last 5 years well the number 2 significant factor is the political party the basis of the political party at 26.93% that the people are going to vote in that particular direction the 13.83% feel that they will vote in favor of a political party on the basis of the candidate that they feel from that particular area religion is uh, 1.34% where the people are decidedly going to vote on the basis of religion none of the above at 2.35% let's quickly take a look at the third question that we asked our viewers and how has narendra modi performed as the prime minister very good at 46.46% good at 25.72% poor at 21.64% can't say at 6.18% quickly taking a look at the next question how will the modi factor work in the lok sabha elections modi factor according to people who have taken this survey feel that 20.58% of you feel that modi factor will in fact work well for the upcoming elections for the bjp 18.28% of you feel that modi factor will indeed work very well for the 2024 lok sabha elections for the bjp 10.64% of you feel that the modi factor will work averagely for bjp in the upcoming elections and 4.52% people feel uh, they do not have actually made an opinion about this uh, particular question this particular issue now the fifth question who do you think will form the government in 2024 well a resounding 65.15% of you feel that it is going to be the nda that forms the government in 2024 india alliance get 25.78% uh, votes Uh, government with the regional alliances at 2.86%. Well, 6.21% of you are undecided on this matter. Now, once we have taken a look at the survey results, you all have voted, and uh, this is the what uh, uh, the verdict of the people, the verdict of uh, our viewers is. Let's quickly also bring in our uh, analysts, our political spokespersons. and we are going to quickly have a chat with them on the basis of these results that we have found this is from uttarakhand and let's quickly have a word with them and understand what does this mean in real terms i'm going to start my conversation let's let's first bring in uh, uh, premchand agarwal he is the uttarakhand finance minister do we have with us do we have him with us
Okay, all right. So uh, I'm going to get Prem Chand Agarwal. He's the Uttarakhand Finance Minister in just a short while. In the meantime, let's start my conversation with Advocate Manas Vithapur. Now, Advocate Thapur, uh, you took a look at the results. Uh, the Modi factor is something that resonates with the large percentage of the people who have taken this vote in Uttarakhand as well. And this has been the pattern that has been largely witnessed in the rest of the states that we have surveyed up until now, barring Punjab. So how do you view the results? What is this indicative of? I think the result is in the lines of what we have been thinking, that it is Prime Minister Narendra Modi's wave, uh, which continues since 2014. And it, it is only getting consolidated uh, with the Uttarakhand's understanding which your uh, channel has done it's uh, commendable the way you have done it, it it's uh, at, at par with what the ground understanding is even in 2019 61 percent of the vote share went to uh, prime minister narendra modi bjp and 31 percent only came to congress it, it it does not look like it's going to be a summer soul change or i think it, it's going to be further reduction of uh three four three to five percent vote share of the congress here so that is what is it looks like, and there is uh, there is a factor of BSP also coming into uh, Uttarakhand, and that factor will only damage the vote share of Congress and uh, BJP with 61 vote uh, percent vote share in the Lok last Lok Sabha will gain one or two percent extra vote share this time, mm. and will only consolidate further. So so that's a, that's a it is a BJP it's a okay. BJP wave Uttarakhand specifically it says there is there is going to be no change in BJP. Uh, vote share. There is no, the, five out of five BJP is winning for sure. Mm. But uh, Manas, we hear you, the, the question arises: is, you know, it, it it looks like political parties in the opposition and the citizens of our country have taken for granted that BJP NDA is going to win. But the question now arises: is by what percentage of the seats and votes is it going to win it? Because the the contending point over here for the opposition parties is not that the BJP and NDA are going to lose. What they are contending about over here is that whether they will be able to cross the 400 mark. See, in the last election also, they got 5 out of 5 specifically for Uttarakhand. This election also, it looks like they will get 5 out of 5. There is no doubt about it. So the 400 mark, whichever has to come for BJP. So it is their target. It is not about that they get it or they don't get it. It's about they're winning comfortably, that's for sure. Uh, they're going to repeat a pre previous victory or they're going to enhance from the, what they had done in the past. That's up to the voters to decide and their campaigning is on top as of now in comparison to the opposition leaders and opposition parties. So, uh, 400 mark is something which they have given a target. It is not necessary if 400 new or things or see so that's a loss. No, that is not a loss. It is a, it is a good thing for BJP. They have kept the target very high which in, in the recent history of Indian politics, if I track from 1990s, no political party actually had a 400 target that we, let's go above 400 or 400 as a mark. So BJP is pushing its limit, uh, pushing its goal further. And it's a good thing. It, it keeps the it keeps the Karakarta motivated. It, it keeps mm. them motivated. It's good okay. for the momentum of the BJP. Uh, but in the northern region, they have already frozen their own uh, seats. So no yeah. seats are going to be... It, it's it's saturated. Be, uh, so where is it? How is it that the BJP is going to win the extra votes from 303? How is it going to co cross it the is, 370 it basically, mark? It is basically going to be between uh, the eastern and the southern region where they can consolidate some yeah. extra uh, seats. It is going okay. to be that battle which they are going to fight. But the good part for the BJP is the northern belt which, which they have consolidated, frozen. Mm. Are still with them. There is there is there is an oita of change. On the contrary, it is going to uh, in the vote share. It is going to benefit BJP. So that okay. is what a okay. great thing for BJP is happening. Okay, all right. Uh, I'm being told that Premchand Agarwal has now. Okay, we'll we'll come back to him. I have with me. I have with me Surendra Agarwal, who's the UK PCC president as well. Now, uh, Surendra Agarwal, quickly a response from you about. Uh, the survey that we have conducted right now, what are your views, particularly with regards to the, to the overarching view of the people who have taken this survey, that it is going to be a BJP wave, it is going to be a Modi wave this time around as well.
Okay. 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 While we try to fix that connection, uh, I'm going to now bring in. Uh, okay. I have with me Ashutosh Sharma. Ashutosh Sharma is also a political analyst. Ashutosh, uh, your view. What do you, what do you view uh, the situation to be? How do you read it? And uh, interestingly, so Uttarakhand not a very significant state, just five Lok Sabha seats. But can it uh, make or break BJP's fortunes in a bid to reach <coughs> the 400 mark? Well, for BJP, each and every seat, no matter five, five number is a big number for BJP because they want to make it 400 plus. Right. If they want to make 400 plus, each seat for BJP is very, very important. They are not going to take any state, Aapko any seat lightly. Ke, yes. They, they are not taking any seat lightly. So to make 400 plus, BJP is working very, very hard and they're working as per their plan. And they want to make sure that they come out with a thumping victory in the coming Lok Sabha election. Modi ji says it's a Modi's wave. People all over, all over the country, they know. BJP, what does BJP mean? BJP means Modi, the Prime Minister. Whatever he said, he has delivered. So people are very anxious to cast their vote in the coming election to make it a big success, thumping victory for the BJP party. Okay. Okay, so yes. so, so what is, do you think oppos the opposition is, you know, it's, it, it does not even have a fighting chance against the BJP? Well, which party are we talking of opposition? Congress party that has already been decimated, their leadership in the Congress party, they failed to find any suitable candidate. All the seats were declared. The candidates were declared by BJP. Congress was thinking they were lagging far behind. If they, they are unable to find a suitable candidate against the BJP, they think of the two important seats of Uttar Pradesh, Amethi, Rai Bareli, Rahul Gandhi, the erstwhile president of Congress party, he had gone to Kerala. Why not? He's not sure whether he's going to win from UP or mm. not. You know, but don't so you think the important, you know, the important factor is going to be southern India? BJP has yeah. still not been able to make a dent. There are they, they, there are states that have, you know, a large number of Lok Sabha constituencies, whether we talk about particularly Tamil Nadu, you know, 40 you're plus right. seats. You're right. When you talk you're about right. Kerala, those are 20. Those that's a significant amount. There's a significant number of seats over there. Andhra Pradesh, Telangana, Odisha. So these are important states that BJP needs to focus on. If it is, do you think these are the focus states that BJP needs to, uh, you know, I, if it wants to cross 400 mark? And, and do you think amidst the, the last five years, uh, the, the, the schemes that have been launched, projects that have been inaugurated, the rallies that Prime Minister Narendra Modi has done in southern India, the kind of overarch, the kind of uh, outreach that has been done, whether it is about the Kashi Tamil Sangamam or we talk about the Sengal that has been installed in the new parliament building, are these overtures going to convert to votes? Well, BJP is trying hard. They are working hard. BJP means Modi. If we talk about BJP, it's nothing but Modi. It's a Modi wave. Entire country, the kind of packages they've been offered to southern states, people know that whatever the prime minister says, he's fulfilling his promises. And in coming few days, many more changes, alliances are going to take place in southern states. The elections are yet to commence next month. So many more other parties, many more candidates, they might be switching over. Uh, people are seeing their benefit, whether it is good, for, uh, it is in the interest for them to stay back in the party they, they have been contesting or to switch over to BJP. I, mean, I have seen a lot of candidates from other parties, they're switching over, but still for BJP, it's not a cakewalk. Like you said, southern states, BJP has not made big impact. But each and every seat in southern state is also very important. There are 100 plus seats from Lok Sabha in southern states. If they want to make it 400 plus, they have to work really, mm. very, very hard. Okay, fair enough. Of course they do. Uh, yeah. All right, on, 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 on the telecast, let's, let's quickly, finally, we have uh, uh, the Uttarakhand Finance Minister, Premchand Agarwalji. Thank you very much for joining us on the telecast. Quickly, quickly your viewpoint, you know, five Lok Sabha constituencies... Uh, that are going to be fought by the BJP and the India Alliance members in the state of Uttarakhand. 
Uh, it has been a bastion of the BJP in the state elections and in the Lok Sabha elections as well. How do you view the situation will unfold? May I speak in Hindi? Ji, bilkul. Prem Chand ji, bataiye. देखिए हमारे यहाँ लोकसभा की पांच सीटें हैं उत्तराखंड के अंदर और मैं ये जानकारी देना चाह रहा हूँ कि 2014 में और 2019 में ये पांचों सीटें भारतीय जनता पार्टी की झोली में आई थी 2014 मेरी आवाज आ रही है क्या जी जी बिल्कुल 2014 2014 के आ, लिए हमने मन बनाया था कि हमारे देश के प्रधानमंत्री माननीय मोदी जी हों अब आप देखिए कि वो मोदी जी प्रधानमंत्री हुए और जिस प्रकार से उन्होंने देश के लिए काम किया देशवासियों के लिए काम किया और 2019 में जब दोबारे चुनाव हुए लोकसभा के तो अब आप देखिए उससे बड़े मार्जिन से हमने पांचों सीटें फिर भारतीय जनता पार्टी की झोली में उत्तराखंड के राज्य में हमने दी यानी कार्यकर्ताओं ने दी आज दो हजार चौदह क्या लगता है कोई चैलेंजेस होंगे उत्तराखंड को छोड़कर जब हम मोदी वेव की बात करें क्या मोदी वेव सदर्न इंडिया में पहुंच गया क्योंकि अब सारे के सारे पॉलिटिकल पार्टीज ऑपोजिशन में क्वेश्चन उठा रही हैं चैलेंज कर रही हैं बीजेपी को कि वो 370 मार्क कैसे क्रॉस करेंगे मैं इसलिए कह सकता हूं कि मैं एक मिनट सिर्फ एक मिनट इससे पहले मैं एक बात पूरी कर लू दो के मुहाने पे खड़े चुनाव सिर पे है आज सत्ताईस तारीख अंतिम दिन था जिसमें सभी ने अपने अपने नामांकन किए हैं उत्तराखंड के अंदर पहले फेज में हमारे उत्तराखंड में चुनाव होना है जहां तक आपने देश के बारे में कहा है मैं कह सकता हूं ये पांचों सीटें हैं तो उससे बड़े अंतर से हम लोग यहां जीतने वाले हैं कोई चैलेंज हमें यहां दिखाई नहीं देता है जहां तक देश के 370 की बात की है और वो विपक्ष कुछ भी कहे मैं सिर्फ एक सेंटेंस में यदि मेरे से आप पूछें तो उसमें एक सेंटेंस में मैं जवाब दे सकता हूं कि कांग्रेस हो चाहे विपक्षी दल कोई भी हो आज ना तो उनकी कोई नीति है ना उनकी कोई नियत है ना उनका कोई नेतृत्व है और जनता का विश्वास वो खो चुके हैं तो ऐसी स्थिति में अब एक ही सामने सभी के विषय है कि यदि माना मोदी जी हैं, तो वो नीति भी उनकी साफ है नियत आपने 10 साल में जनता के काम की और एक एक यदि गिनाऊंगा तो आपका समय ज्यादा लगेगा सब जानते हैं मैं जो कहूंगा वो सब जानते हैं और उसके बाद उनका जो सबल नेतृत्व है सशक्त नेतृत्व है जिसने देश की छवि पूरे विश्व के अंदर आज मैं यदि कहूं कि पहले हमारे को उपहास की दृष्टि से देखते थे और आज हमारे देश के बारे में लोग यदि कहीं बाहर जाके आप बात करिए तो एक सम्मान की दृष्टि से देखते हैं Prime Minister Narendra Modi, the NDA, the BJP. I'm also being joined by. Uh, I, I have with me Dr. G V R Shastri. Dr. G V R Shastri, the situation. How do you read it uh, from the time that the Election Commission decided to, and made the announcement to uh, made the announcement for the dates to up until now, and there are I think 40 more dates remaining when the when the elections begin, when the voting begins. See, I have a certain opinion about the elections. Uh, elections are very clear, right? Should be, as far as the festival is concerned, it should be a time frame of within 15 days. Even though we are 140 crores population, it can't be more than two phases. It is a incompetency, incapability of this election commission. We have a central forces available, very much available. cast to the governance is very very important three months holding election it's not there it is not the mandate of election one and a half months no no three months it's almost three months it is it started from here the election commission doesn't have any mandate to do like this election commission is a mandate of free fair peaceful successful election hmm not on the time frame they can if they if they allow them they will continue for at least another five years elections Yeah, they can. So, they can do it. But don't you think, Dr. Jeevi Shastri, if it, in terms of the in terms of the volatility of certain states, particularly when we talk about the Union Territory, Jammu and Kashmir, when we talk about Bengal, that has witnessed widespread violence. Either you allow me to speak. Because yeah, yeah, yeah. Go ahead. Yes. There is a mismatch of what exactly yeah. I want to convey. 
You asked me the election commission and the conduct of the election as well as the country is concerned. And I am very, spe very specific about it. As a citizen of this nation, it is absolutely haphazard. And the election commission doesn't have any that kind of mandate to conduct the election like this. The election commission, de democracy of festival must be viewable, watchable and verifiable. The franchise of vote is viewable, watchable, verifiable. The democracy is, means that. Democracy is nothing to do with the political party. Political parties may participate it, may not participate it. We don't care. Participation of people is most important. Participation of people is most important. There is no embargo that 544 independents can win the election also. And there is nothing, nothing, nothing people can be stopped for electing all 544. 44 independents. Talk about the election commission. I'm very much clear about it. The way they are under, understanding, the way they are conducting. The, as far as the process is concerned, or the procedure is concerned, the way they are adopting it, it is not correct. It is not correct. Okay. So, so according to you, how, how do you think the elections in our country should be held? It is in two phase. It is in two phase. 270 one phase, two, two, 544 divided into two, within 15 days gap, hmm. a 10 days gap. And it's that's why, that brings me to the question, the next question, Dr. Shastri, how do we tackle the volatile states? Shouldn't there be enough law enforcement agencies that need to be deployed in See, certain I parts of the country to ensure the elections are peaceful? To ensure that there's decorum that is maintained. Direct, no, you want to give the direct benefit transfers. All are interconnected with other. The franchise of vote is not connected with other. The franchise of vote is not supposed to be other. with other. What kind of where which world we are staying in? You can conduct elections of 540 crores population within okay. stipulated time of 240 okay. hours. Okay. You, Fair enough. Okay, you've made a point. You've made a point. Let's quickly listen in to uh, Sumitra going on this. So, Sumitra, uh, also, you know, allegations have also been made by political parties as well. They have said that uh, it is to the benefit of the BJP that they want to prolong the phases of the elections in certain states like Maharashtra and West Bengal. But when it comes to a big state like Tamil Nadu, the phase is, no, I think it's, it's, it's being no, fought no, in a single phase. Yes, no, yes, no. I understand what you're saying, Dr. Jeevi Ashazi, but let, let her, yeah, let her, Mika, let her are, answer you, that. Yeah. Let her answer Mika, it. You are, you are wrongly interpreting. I am not. I know, I'm not. I'm, I'm no, I'm not. I understand what I you're saying, Dr. Jeevi Ashazi. Let me, uh, let me ask her this question. I'll come back to you and I'll come back to the point that you've raised, which is a very valid point. And we'll discuss this on the larger spectrum that when we are digitized, when we have our Aadhaar cards, when we are uh, using our mobile apps to put in all our documents, when we get the funds and the DBT transfers, like you said, at the click of a button, why can't our election process also be made digitized? But yes, that's the point that you made. But right now, I want to hear from Sumitra. Sumitra, how do you view this? The allegations being made by political parties, does it also uh, smell of... Uh, bias towards the ruling dispensation. Yeah, good evening, Megha. Uh, am I audible? Yes. Okay. So, good evening, Megha, and good evening to all the panelists. Uh, so, first of all, I think uh, this is for the election commissioner to answer why they have not linked Aadhaar yet with the voter ID. I think eventually uh, we may see a day when uh, this process is also going to get digitalized. Right now, if you look at it, every uh, thing that we are doing is slowly moving towards uh, the digital way. So I hope that in a short uh, duration from now, maybe in the next elections or uh, the elections next to it, there will be some kind of changes uh, to the digitization. Second uh, thing is, uh, like you said, about the bias, uh, 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 if there are more phases. So, uh, right now, I don't agree that there is any bias because Election Commission is an independent body. 
we have seen people uh, raising uh, 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 you know eyebrows uh, that evm is faulty or uh, the election commission is uh, uh, acting in a biased way or other agencies also the courts have also not been spared by uh, many of the people so i don't agree that at this point of time there is any undue advantage now if you look at the history of certain states uh, earlier we used to talk about say bihar so in bihar we were seeing a lot of violence which was happening during elections today we can see that there are very sensitive areas like uh, west bengal west bengal was never like this before but if you look at even the panchayat elections mm. or even the state elections see what, the okay fair violence, enough you're talking about talking about violence and volatility yes, uh, and that dictate the terms of the election commission expanding the number of phases what about maharashtra maharashtra has also been expanded for, uh, i think there are five phases in which phases. now i think seven phases in which now maharashtra is going to poll i don't see any reason uh, particularly with regards to any any upheavals that have been witnessed recently in maharashtra or any violence related these incidents are, that have taken place these are sensitive areas these are sensitive areas i i, I don't know I, exactly the the definition of, of a state report. state or a region being sensitive at this point of time seems subjective seems subjective so garima garima on the telecast report, with me garima is joining me from the congress garima quickly a response from you let 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 garima speak and i'll come back to you dr jeevi shastri i'll come back to the topic that you also raised but garima question over here I, you were not here while i was reading out the survey we came up with a survey five questions we asked the people of uttarakhand and they have given a resounding thumbs up to the modi factor that will play a large role for the nda for the bjp to win the elections how do you view this result see these are survey we cannot believe the survey is blindfolded so whatever we are seeing during the nominations the people are uh, on their own you know in uh, ardhwar we had the largest of the rally or the jan sabha immediately after the nominations of ganesh godial there is a factor there is an issue that bahari and pahadi issue has taken over pahadi garhwal even in tri lok sabha seat there has been a tremendous anti incumbency factor against ri raj lakshmi because uh, she has been an mp for 12 13 years and no public appearance whatsoever so i think that uh, 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 the kind of uh, anti incumbency which is there modi factor definitely is there but this time Uh, the popularity has really gone down declined quite a bit and uh, our uh, uh, the candidates are uh, obviously uh, better than the bjp candidates here since mm. they have repeated three candidates and they have planted a cm uh, an ex cm in haridwar seat which they have stamped as a failed cm trivendra rawat was removed from the chief ministerial post after 4 years after stamping him as a failed chief minister but now garima, how can they think, but gar, gar, yeah. garima also the fact that since 24 2014 they uh, bjp has been winning all the five lok sabha constituencies uh, uh, does this reflect on whichever way bjp handles its own ministers the chief minister you mentioned about how he had to be removed and a new one had to be reinstated uh do, do you think in the larger scheme of things people really don't care because uh, with the results that no, have come uh, out no, in the last two results no, that have come out no, in the BGP. last two lok sabha elections they have given their vote and support to bjp see it's been 10 years of the central power and 7 years of uttarakhand power with bjp now and bjp has been exposed on several fronts bjp has been exposed due to its false promises to close jobs uh you know double income to the farmers 100 smart cities black money to be uh, got back to the country and uh, uh, a roof to every family mm. these are all false promises there has been unemployment a uh, tremendous unemployment rate over here uh, even mahangai is going to be one of the uh, reasons and um, the bjp as i said has been exposed in front of okay. uttarakhand uh, okay. public uh, okay. they are really going to vote this time for congress candidates okay all right uh, okay and i'll come back i'll, I'll come back, I'll come back to the rest of the panelists hold on hold on to that thought let's quickly also listen in 
to more number of people that my colleagues have gone to the ground in Uttarakhand and spoken and what is it of their view of uh, the Lok Sabha elections? Who do they think is going to win this time? चुनाव तो सबको मालूम है भारतीय जनता पार्टी जो है अच्छे वोटरों से जीतेगी उत्तराखंड की पांचों सीटें ले जाएगी और प्रधानमंत्री नरेंद्र मोदी जी जो है देश के लिए अच्छा काम कर रहे हैं हिंदुस्तान का नाम पूरे वर्ल्ड में जो है पहुंचा रहे हैं और हम तो सब उन्हीं के साथ में हैं जो जो देश के लिए अच्छा काम करेगा बीजेपी ज्यादा से ज्यादा तीन दो सीट जो है विपक्ष वाले कांग्रेस ले जा सकती है क्योंकि कारण यह है कि उत्तराखंड में जो है राज्य ने इतना विकास नहीं किया हमारे साइड से क्योंकि जहां उन्होंने हर जगह जो है घोषणा की है उस काम पे जो है अमल नहीं किया है वो दस साल तक चल रहा है ये काम कहीं रोड की समस्या लोगों की ज्यादातर रोड की समस्या है मेरी तरफ से जो देखा जाए मेन है रोड ये जो जीतती है वो जीतती है बीजेपी जीतेगी और कौन जीतेगा सबके दिमाग में बीजेपी बैठी हुई है ना इस टाइम पे और तीन साल तीन बार वो जीत चुकी है सो दो बार जीत चुकी है तीसरी बार फिर जीत जीत सकती है क्यों ना सोचा कि डिजिटल इंडिया बना दिया है और लोग सब खुश हैं लेकिन ना गरीब लोग तो दुखी है वो तो दुखी है हमेशा रहेंगे चाहे कांग्रेस आए चाहे बीजेपी आए चाहे कोई सरकार कोई भी आ जाए उन पर ध्यान ध्यान दुखी रखती है ना क्योंकि उन पर ध्यान कौन देता है कोई नहीं। अब बीजेपी अभी लॉकडाउन आपको तो लॉकडाउन लगा हुआ था अभी पता ही आपको तो जो अमीर थे वो तो अमीर बन चुके हैं बन गए वो नोटबंदी थी अमीर कौन बना गरीब गरीब लोग क्या कर रहे हैं लाइन लगे हुए अमीर लोग पीछे से सब ब्लैक मनी हटा दी आपको पता ही है माहौल तो आपको पता है कि बीजेपी की उसमें ये है क्योंकि सारे जो भी काम हुए हैं एक्सलेंट हुए हैं बीजेपी के शासनकाल में इसमें कोई दो उपन नहीं आता जो कोई कर नहीं पाए हैं मोदी जी ने किए हैं चारों तरफ डेवलपमेंट है ऑल इन दल स्पेयर्स आकाश पृथ्वी और जमीन से लेकर सब जगह जो है मोदी जी का है तो और चारों तरफ डेवलपमेंट है इसलिए बीजेपी का लोग कोई है ही नहीं तो इससे पहले 10-15 साल जो भी रही महारानी जी का कार्यकाल चला तो महारानी जी ने कुछ हमारी विधानसभा पूरी टीरी लोकसभा क्षेत्र कहीं भी उन्होंने काम नहीं किया कुछ भी नहीं किया तो इस इसमें अगर आ, आगे देखने आए तो यह तो बोवी पवार है बोवी पवार यही है एक और यह तो भी कांग्रेस हो सकती है दोनों में से महारानी जी अब बहुत मुश्किल है भाजपा जीतेगी मोदी सरकार आएगी फिर चार पार विदेश नीति इतनी बढ़िया है और देश का विकास हो रहा है और क्या चाहिए सर ऐसा लग रहा है लग क्या रहा है, है ही बीजेपी जीतेगी ये क्योंकि बीजेपी ने काम बहुत किए हैं अब जहां आप खड़े हो अगर आज आज से चार पाँच साल पहले इस इलाके को देखते और आज देख लो आप हर तरफ हरियाली है पेड़ लगे हुए हैं मेंटेनेंस अच्छी है सामने पार्क है वो देखो उसमें बच्चों के लिए खेलने के लिए झूले हैं यहाँ टॉय ट्रेन है यहाँ पे गांधी पार्क में और अभी शुरू हुई है वंदे भारत आज से चल रही है लखनऊ के लिए और बहुत अच्छी ट्रेन है आठ घंटे में लखनऊ पहुंचेंगे हम ओ तो हमारे यहाँ से एक सौ एक परसेंट All right, so you heard it from the people on the ground in Uttarakhand. I'm going to quickly again bring in my panelists. Like I said, the Modi factor will it work for the BJP and the NDA? It looks likely, keeping in mind that Uttarakhand has continuously, term after term, seen the BJP winning all the five constituency, Lok Sabha constituency seats. But there are other issues uh, that the political parties and the opposition and India Alliance and the Congress right now just raised. and uh, quickly taking a look at that and uh, i'm going to i'm going to bring in uh, my panelists again again dr gvi shastri you've been you've been uh, want uh, garima i'll come back to you dr gvi shastri you've been wanting to make a point over here uh, obviously uh, garima talks about uh, uh, alleged corruption within bjp in uttarakhand there is mismanagement in Uttar uttarakhand there are no welfare projects uttarakhand the government is unstable are the allegations of the congress how do you view will this impact the voters choice see uh, last time last conversation i said very clearly the importance of the country is more important the bilateral relation and economy In bilateral relation really the prime minister modi is playing a very very key role you can see during the election also he was forced to visit to bhutan you can see the importance in during the election he is having a dialogue bilateral dialogue with ukraine president and russian president 
So why I said within this election commission must understand Minister Modi's role in the global scenario is an impact, important factor. Mm. Very, very important. It's not because he's a Modi. He's a prime minister as a global leader is playing a role. And his role is to be continued. Okay. And you know, the election, if you hold the election, like, you know, 45 days, two months, it's, it, you see, that he doesn't carry that weight. Unnecessary, we are, see, the country leadership, we need to strength. But it is not strengthening, it is weakening. Okay. All right. All right. Let me, let me discuss this with other panelists as well. Uh, Manasvi, how do you view this? Uh, you know, uh, Dr. G.V. Ashasi talking about how uh, reducing the time in which the election is and voting takes place is going to be lesser of a burden to the exchequer, lesser of a burden to the law and enforcement uh, 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 agencies. Also, there is going to be more developmental work that will that that politicians, that leaders will get time in running their states, in running the country. And of course, he's spoken about how the prime minister has has a lot of compulsions, has to be responsible for a number of things and not just the election. So why hold these elections in, in, in a multi-pronged fashion in a long period of time? I think this is perhaps the longest that the election commission has dragged the elections this time. In terms of, in terms of number of days, yes, it is the longest. In terms of phases, it is not the longest, yeah. but in terms of number of days, The number of the days, longest. of course, the number of yeah. days. Yeah, so... so uh, so, so, so this, this, this is, this is more of a political and less of a, less of a technical issue. I'll tell you why. Because the dependency on Prime Minister Narendra Modi as the star campaigner of this election, the last election, uh, because entire democracy or entire election scenario is all about him. So, when we talk about uh, who are the five candidates of Uttarakhand, so people will not know about it. People know Prime. We are voting for Prime Minister Narendra Modi, and this is how the election is all about. Uh, in in your last debate when I was here for Gu Gujarat, it was no one no one would know how many candidates or, or who are the candidates in Gujarat. Twenty six exactly. candidates. Yes. Who, it's for Prime Minister Narendra Modi. So he as a human, he has to he has to be there everywhere. So timing also has to be adjusted as per his schedule. So look at Maharashtra. Seven but phases are there. So the dependency on him is so much on BJ of BJP that he is the star campaigner of BJP. Though there would be a list of around 70, 40 people who would be the star campaigner. But at the end of the day, it is the onus is on him. So he is the driving force for BJP. And there is no second ladder leadership in BJP who can take that onus of fighting election in two phases. It's a very, it's a very technically, economically making sensible uh, comment by GVR. But the point here is because that one person, that one person who has to drive it, it is the Prime Minister Narendra okay. Modi. And Fair enough. That's, that's an important point made. Ashutosh, quickly a response from you over here. Uh, the <laughs> extending of the dates of voting and increasing the phases, and particularly in the states of Maharashtra and Jammu and Kashmir and Bengal, are more political, these reasons are more political than the election commission is talking about the logistics and keeping in mind the volatility of the situation in all these states. Like my friend Manasvi just explained about the stand, the India, India is a larger country. See, we are 140 crore plus. And seeing the past record of the states, Bihar, West, now West Bengal, Maharashtra, other states, to make the elections very smooth, that no booth capturing, no forced voting is done. So elections have been held, held in that many phases and for that many longer period of time. Hmm. Mobilizing the team, mobilizing the mechanism, mobilizing the forces who are going to manage the booths, who's, who are going to manage the, all this voting system in different parts of the country. It's a big upheaval task for the party. So last time, whatever the shortcomings were in the in the elections, to make sure that they are not repeated in these coming elections. So that's one of the reasons. No doubt, this is the longest time, I do admit. BJP has to work very, very hard. It's a face of the Modi, wherever the elections are held. Whosoever is going to vote, BJP, he's going to vote Modi. 
Modi has to be present in each and every constituency which he is going to win. Yeah. For so, do you, do, you think, do you think the election commission's decision has been influenced by the political party, which is the BJP's interests? Well, is, there's a big question. There's a big question, I would say. Election mm. commission, why he held in such a long period? That, okay. That can that can be debated. That can be debated. It could have been in lesser time, or okay. it could have been four or five pages. Okay. So Premchand, Premchand Agarwal, yeah, yeah. Premchand Agarwal, how do you view this? You know, allegations not just by the political parties, but the Am Janta analysts. They are at this point of time wondering why this change. Does this suit the BJP narrative? Prem Premchand ji. Hello, Safni Ari, aapki. हाँ प्रेमचंद जी यहाँ पे ये जो एलिगेशन की गई है या क्वेश्चंस उठाए जा रहे हैं एनालिसिस हो रहा है कि जो महाराष्ट्र में सात फेज में इलेक्शन कर दिए हैं जम्मू एंड कश्मीर में आपके सात फेज में इलेक्शन है आपके वेस्ट बंगाल में सात फेज में इलेक्शन है पर जब बात आती है तमिलनाडु की जिसमें चालीस से ज्यादा सीटों पर आ, लोग आ, लड़ने वाले हैं कैंडिडेट्स हैं वहां पर आपने एक फेज में इलेक्शन खत्म कर दिया है तो क्या दिस दिस रिफ्लेक्टिव की बीजेपी uh, की जो पॉलिटिकल डिमांड्स हैं, पॉलिटिकल इंक्लिनेशन हैं, प्राइम मिनिस्टर नरेंद्र मोदी हैं, आपके एक इकलौते स्टार कैंपेनर हैं, उनकी वजह से आपको वोट मिलते हैं और उनको ये सारे जगहों पर ये सारे रीजन में जाना पड़ता है कैंपेनिंग करनी पड़ती है लोगों को अपने तरफ खींचना पड़ता है उनके वोट वो करने पड़ते हैं तो क्या इस रीजन के लिए इलेक्शन कमीशन ने ये डेट्स को इतना स्टागर कर दिया है तो मैं ये आपको बता दूं कि चुनाव आयोग एक स्वतंत्र संस्था है वो कोई पॉलिटिकल पार्टी कोई सरकार उसको डिक्टेट नहीं कर सकती है वो उसका अपना नजरिया है कि कहाँ पे किस फेस में वो चुनाव कराए जहां तक माने नरेंद्र मोदी जी की बात है ये बात ठीक है कि हमारे वो एक सशक्त नेतृत्व के रूप में आज हमारे देश के प्रधानमंत्री के रूप में और एक सबसे सर्वाधिक लोकप्रिय वो देश में नहीं पूरे विश्व में सर्वाधिक लोकप्रिय नेता के रूप में भी उभरे हैं सब लोग चाहते हैं कि उनका आना उनके क्षेत्र में हो बल्कि अब तो ये स्थिति बन गई हर कॉन्स्टिटेंसी के जो प्रत्याशी वो चाहते हैं उनकी कॉन्स्टिटेंसी में वो आए लेकिन ये संभव नहीं आप भी जानते हैं इसके बावजूद मैं ये भी कह सकता हूं कि माननीय नरेंद्र मोदी जी की स्वीकारता तो सब जगह है लेकिन उसके साथ साथ हमारे यहाँ अनेकों ऐसे नेता है जिनके जिनकी भी लोगों की इच्छा रहती है कि वो भी यदि वहां आते हैं तो निश्चित रूप से एक वातावरण जो आज भारतीय जनता पार्टी के पक्ष में है वोट तो भारतीय जनता पार्टी के पक्ष में ही पड़ना है और माननीय मोदी जी का जो करिश्माई नेतृत्व है जिस तरह से उन्होंने 10 साल काम किए हैं मैं भी यदि अपनी बात कर रहा हूं तो भारतीय जनता पार्टी के एक प्रतिनिधि के रूप में बात कर रहा हूँ लेकिन अंत दस तो माननीय मोदी जी ने किए है ना उनके काम के आधार पर अभी माननीय हमारी गरिमा जी यहाँ बैठी थी बोल रही है ओके okay, मेरा मेरा एक मेरा पॉइंटेड क्वेश्चन था जिसको आपने ऑब्वियसली डिफ्लेक्ट कर लिया गरिमा क्विकली रिस्पॉन्स फ्रॉम यू मैम व्हाट आर मॉकरी ऑफ डेमोक्रेसी दिस बीजेपी कैंडिडेट्स आर मेकिंग आउट और आप देखिए कि टिहरी की जो रानी लाज लक्ष्मी को टिकट मिला है उनसे जब पूछा गया कि आपने पिछले बारह तेरह सालों में क्या काम किया है तो द आंसर वॉज वट एवर मोदी जी इज डूइंग इन द सेंट्रल दैट इज माई वर्क ओनली दैट इज इनडायरेक्टली माई वर्क ओनली देन शी वॉज आज की आप केवल चुनाव दर चुनाव क्यों दिखती है केवल चुनाव के टाइम पर क्यों पब्लिक अपेयरेंस आपकी होती है तो शी सेंग के मैं थोड़ी चुनाव लड़ रही हूँ मोदी जी चुनाव लड़ रहे कैन यू बिलीव क्या मोदी जी अकेली है एक तरफ बोला जा रहा है कि एक सौ चालीस करोड़ लोगों का ये देश है क्या मोदी जी का जो करिश्माई नेतृत्व प्रेमचंद अग्रवाल यहाँ पर बता रहे हैं वो अकेले इस देश को खींच सकने में सक्षम है अगर प्रत्याशी इस तरह की बात करेंगे और जो मुद्दे हैं यहाँ के उत्तराखंड के अंकिता भंडारी को न्याय न मिल पाना बेरोजगार युवाओं पर लाठी चलाना भर्ती घोटाले और ये जो प्रेमचंद अग्रवाल जी आपके सामने बैठे हैं एज अ स्पीकर एज अ विधानसभा अध्यक्ष इन्होंने बैकडोर सैकड़ों नियुक्तियां करी वो मौजूद मुद्दा होने वाला है जोशी मजबूत असाओ और दो सौ तीस दो सौ तेईस किलो सोना चोरी केदारनाथ से हुआ है मैडम दो सौ तेईस किलो सोना केदारनाथ के हिंदुत्व के झंडा बरदार बनते हैं ये भाग पाई किलो लेकिन इन्होंने सोना चोरी पर आज तक जांच नहीं बैठाई तो मैं अगर आपसे फीस वाइज आप मुझसे पूछे तो अजय टमटा अल्मोड़ा से प्रत्याशी हैं इनके जो पिछले पांच साल में भी प्रत्याशी थे वो कपड़ा मंत्री रहे लेकिन उत्तराखंड के लिए कुछ नहीं इन्होंने कीर्तिमान स्थापित किया 
अजय भट्ट अजय भट्ट भी केंद्र में मंत्री रहे डिफेंस मिनिस्ट्री में उन्होंने उत्तराखंड के लिए कुछ नहीं किया अनिल बलूनी पैराशूट कैंडिडेट इट्स गोइंग टू बी ट्वेंटी फोर इयर्स ओके फेर ना Fair enough. Okay, quickly, Sumitra. Sumitra, do you want to respond over here? Obviously, a number of grouses from the Congress's side. Congress obviously making tall, making claims that the BJP has not done anything for Uttarakhand, and the BJP leaders, the candidates, are not really doing anything on the ground in their constituencies. But they are selling Modi at every level, every 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 campaign, every door to door meetings that they are holding. Yeah. So, uh, see what uh, Karima ji is saying. Yeah. I think she has to uh, communicate this to the voters, and the voters are smart enough to decide uh, uh, which candidate to select. If the Congress is able to communicate their views properly uh, with Absolutely. the voters, then they will get the vote. Right now, Absolutely. people are standing with Modi ji, and also I have one uh, point here. Like everybody was saying that okay, uh, this uh, seven phase, eight phase election is because Modi ji should get more time to campaign. But who stops the other leaders from campaigning? Is there a gag order that others cannot campaign? Take Rahul Gandhi, take Priyanka Gandhi. They also are getting the same time. If people are not willing to listen to them, if okay. people don't want them. तो हाउ कम इज मोदी जी एट फॉल्ट इट इज ओके मैं 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 सुमित्रा सुमित्रा जी जी का जवाब in the power what happened in kedarnath who is responsible for that who is that time chief minister garima ji is forgotten it mm. what kind of nonsense she is talking what happened with the karnataka deputy chief minister who is right now how much money we recovered see the congress party is politically corrupted they don't know what they are talking about they only make allegation about individuals whether it is prem chand or xyz or anybody okay so they put okay. through throw a stones on people and they forget they don't have a, they don't have anything they don't have anything to throw okay all right throw. all right uh, ashutosh ashutosh quickly quickly 30 seconds yes see the on, only thing is the opposition they have failed to Field any suitable candidate. They are lacking the candidate. The Congress former leader, the erstwhile Rahul Gandhi, he is unable to unite the party. Congress party is almost on the verge of extinct from the nation. The oldest party, 138 years old party, they are unable to find suitable candidates to contest the present election. So, had the opposition been united, the key point is the so-called Indi or India factor. they not united they made several meetings hmm. with the different party leaders sometime mamta ji is backing out she is moving out she doesn't want to be part of the party sometime congress is going sometime nitish kumar is backing out so they had no, unable march to march 31st march 31st is going to be a show of strength you are actually going to witness that they are going to be yeah. all political leaders are going to come down to delhi and they are going to be yes. charging ahead in support of arvind kejriwal uh, and, and okay and they okay okay I, pre, okay fair enough premchand premchand ji you want to make uh, uh, you want to make a quick comment before i wrap this up dekhe pehle to main sirf garima ji ki baat ka jawab de raha hu ki inko na to vikas dikhta hai na inhe janta dikhti hai abhi aapke main nahi samajh pa raha tha ki ek bhi vyakti ne congress ka naam nahi liya phir bhi inhe jo hai apna jo hai bolna hi rehta hai इन्होंने एक भर्ती घोटाले की बात की जरा एक बार ये जवाब दे दे गोविंद सिंह कंजवाल जो इनके विधानसभा अध्यक्ष है एक सौ अठावन भर्ती कैसे की थी यशपाल आर्य जी ने कैसे भर्ती की थी और इस प्रकार से अंकिता भंडारी और ये जो मुद्दे पिटाई पिटाए रिटाए रिटाए लोग जो करते हैं तभी जनता इनको आज बाहर कर रही है इनपे कोई विश्वास नहीं है हरीश रावत जी पांच साल और इनके सरकार में दो तीन बार मुख्यमंत्री रहे कितना भ्रष्टाचार था उन्होंने कहा था कि 25 करोड़ रुपए ले लो और आप जो भी मंत्री बनना चाहे बन जाओ लेकिन मेरा साथ दे दो ये हरीश रावत जी ने कहा था उनका लड़का वहां चुनाव लड़ रहा है तो क्या जनता इनको वोट देगी इनकी करनी और कथनी okay. में अंतर है ये बोलते जाते हैं।
come to a wrap of this edition of Who's Winning 2024, powered by Statistically Speaking. Uh, I would really like my viewers, my audiences to leave a comment, give your feedback, and we'll come back tomorrow with a new state, with a new set of questions, with a new survey, and the results of how you have voted, how you feel about the 2024 Lok Sabha elections and what is going to happen in just a few weeks' time. In fact, let's also take a look at uh, my colleague who was on the ground in Uttarakhand and he spoke to the people, what their issues were, what do they think is going to be the key factor that will be uh, utilized as a clinching victory and by which political party. Take a look. पूरे देश में लोकसभा चुनाव चल रहा है और उत्तराखंड में भी लोकसभा चुनाव का आज नामांकन का अंतिम तिथि है आज नामांकन का अंतिम दिन है और आज पाँच बजे के बाद पता चल जाएगा कि कितने कैंडिडेट ने नामांकन किए हैं तीस तारीख को अंतिम दिन है जब नामांकन नाम वापस लिए जा सकते हैं उन्नीस तारीख को यानी पहले फेज में उत्तराखंड में मतदान होना है और उत्तराखंड का सियासी पारा क्या कहता है यहाँ पे राजनीति किस दिशा में जा रही है और इस वक्त हमारे साथ बात करने के लिए कुछ यहीं के लोग हैं इनको इनसे हम बात करते हैं सबसे पहले आप बताइए कि आप अपना नाम बताइए और बताइए कि क्या स्थिति रहने वाली इस चुनाव में जी भाई सर नमस्कार मेरा नाम मोहित जायसवाल है इस बार स्थिति क्या सारी सारे देश के लोग जानते हैं कि बीजेपी सरकार फिर दोबारा आ रही है क्योंकि मोदी जी ने जो कार्य करे हैं वो किसी से छुपे नहीं है अगर मैं उनके कार्य बताना शुरू करूं तो मुझे लगता है कि पूरा दिन बीत जाएगा मगर कुछ मुख्य उनके कार्य में जिससे सारे देशवासी में खुशी की लहर है और मोदी में हो चुके हैं राम में हो चुके हैं उसमें सबसे पहला कि जो जम्मू कश्मीर से तीन हटाई गई दूसरा राम मंदिर बनाया गया तीसरा जो सी एस सी ए का कानून लेके आया गया और हम बड़े खुश नसीब हैं हमारे इस प्रदेश के सभी युवा साथी और सभी लोग कि यहाँ पर यू सी सी कानून भी सबसे पहले हमारे प्रदेश में ही शुरू हुआ गया और इसी वजह से मैं सोचता हूँ कि दोबारा बीजेपी सरकार इस बार 400 पार हो के ही रहेगी और यहाँ पे तो बीजेपी का थोड़ा अच्छा है यहाँ पे क्योंकि जिस हिसाब से यहाँ हमारी विधानसभा और लोकसभा में जो कार्य हुए हैं उस हिसाब से तो बीजेपी जीत रही है और जो नारा चल रहा है 400 पार तो उम्मीद है कि 400 पार से ऊपर ही जाएगा भाई साहब इस बार जनता बदलाव बना का मूड बना चुकी है और बदलाव होगा और पूरे देश में बदलाव होगा इंडिया गठबंधन जीतेगा कांग्रेस की सरकार बनेगी क्योंकि महंगाई बेरोजगारी भुखमरी से जनता परेशान है युवा परेशान है युवक परेशान है रोजगार है नहीं इन्होंने अग्निवीर बना दिया उससे युवा बहुत परेशान है आज पेंशन वाले वो परेशान है आप इन्होंने बेचते बेचते आपने देख रहे हैं सारा कुछ इन्होंने पब्लिक सेक्टर बेच दिया रेल बेल सेल सारा कुछ बिक चुका है आज बहुत बुरी स्थिति है युवा आपने को ठगा हुआ महसूस कर रहा है और जनता चाहती है कि अब दस साल हमने बीजेपी को दिया है काम किया है लेकिन अब वो कांग्रेस के बदलाव को चाहती है और वो अपने अच्छे दिन ये वाले दिन नहीं चाहती पुराने दिन चाहती है देखो तो आप 400 कहें कितने भी कहें लेकिन धरातल पे जो स्थिति है जो धरातल पे स्थिति है जो रोजगार की स्थिति है जो महंगाई बेरोजगारी की भुखमरी की अस्सी करोड़ जनता को पाँच किलो राशन खिला रहे तो आप समझ सकते हैं कितनी यहाँ पर डेवलपमेंट कितना विकास हुआ होगा वो तो बेचारे पैदल हो गए हैं उनकी तो हालत खराब है लेकिन इलेक्ट्रोल बॉन्ड आ रहे हैं चंदा इकट्ठा हो रहा करोड़ों में हो रहा है दबाव बनाया जा रहा है विपक्ष पे दबाव बनाया जा रहा है उनको गिरफ्तार किया जा रहा है केजरीवाल को भी गिरफ्तार करा दिया बहुत लोगों को गिरफ्तार कराया दबाव बनाया है उनको दबाव करा के वॉशिंग मशीन वॉशिंग पाउडर में जो बीजेपी उसको ले रही है देखिए स्थिति तो सबको पता है कि किसकी मजबूत है सब जानते हैं चार पार से भी ज्यादा पार जाने वाले हैं अगर बात आप करें पूरे देश की तो चार पार तो है ही है किसने क्या काम किया ये भी सबको दिख रहा है पिछले दिनों में भी दिख रहा है हर तरफ किसकी जय जयकार है वो भी दिख रही है और अगर हम टिहरी की बात करें जो हमारी खुद की लोकसभा सीट है जहाँ के हम हैं तो टिहरी में इनके पास ये कैंडिडेट नहीं हो पाया जिसको पिछली बार असेंबली का टिकट नहीं मिल पाया उसको लोकसभा का टिकट दे दिया गया अब आप बताइए कि किसको जीतना पड़ेगा कौन जीतेगा कौन नहीं जीतेगा ये तो खुद बता रहे हैं ये लोग कि इनके पास कितने लोग हैं लड़ने लायक इनके तो हौसले बता रहे हैं कि इतने लड़ सकते हैं इस बार जो है जागरूक मतदाता है और वो कैंडिडेट को देख के वोट करेगा ना कि पार्टी को कैंडिडेट अच्छा जो खड़ेगी वो वोट ले जाएगा
इस बार फिर मोदी सरकार क्योंकि मोदी जी ने जो काम किए हैं वो किसी सरकार ने नहीं किए पचास साल राज किया कांग्रेस ने लेकिन कुछ कुछ नहीं किया देश के हाथ में भिखारी बना दिया देश को कटोरा दिया देश के हाथ में हमारी भाजपा सरकार ने बहुत तरक्की की है जगह जगह पुल बनाए सड़कें बनवाई यहाँ तो बीजेपी आएगी और यहाँ पर क्या बीजेपी ने काम नहीं किया गया आप ही देख लीजिए रोड पे देख लीजिए आप पर ये इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर देख लीजिए आप शहजारा उठा के देख लीजिए आप किसी भी चीज में देख लीजिए कहाँ काम नहीं किया बीजेपी ने कांग्रेस सरकार में कहाँ का काम हुआ मुझे ये बताइए अब तो काम हो रहा है पब्लिक के लिए सरकार बिजली बीजेपी क्या जाती है बीजेपी विद्यालय बन रहे हैं यहाँ पर शौचालय बन रहे विद्यालय बन रहे किस चीज की कमी है बताइए कौन पीड़ित है मुझे ये बताइए कोई पीड़ित नहीं है अगर फिर से सरकार आती है तो किन किन क्षेत्रों पे और काम करने की जरूरत है आपके सर अभी तो जो आगे पब्लिक की डिमांड होगी उसके हिसाब से ही नेताजी उसी तरह से काम किया जाएगा ना सर जैसे जैसे डिमांड बढ़ेगी जहाँ जहाँ दिक्कत आएगी वहाँ पर करेंगे काम अब आप पब्लिक बताएगी कहाँ पर काम होना है कहाँ नहीं है कहाँ दिक्कत होने जा रही है उसी तरीके से काम किया जाएगा अर्थव्यवस्था की बात कर रहे थे अभी वो अभी हमारे देश की अर्थव्यवस्था पांचवें स्थान में विश्व में ठीक है और ये कर रहे हैं अर्थव्यवस्था कि हमारे लोन ले रखा है लोन सिर्फ विकास के लिए ले रखा है वो भी जल्द हमारी सरकार चुका देगी दूसरी बात झारखंड में क्या कर रहे हैं आप खुद ही देख सकते हैं राजपुर रोड का हाल ये उत्तराखंड की सबसे सुंदर और इसमें जितना सौंदर्यकरण हुआ है मुझे नहीं लगता कहीं इतनी इतना ज़्यादा सौंदर्यकरण इतना पैसा सरकार ने यहाँ पर दिया है आप सड़कें देख लिए पानी बिजली हर चीज किसी हर सुविधा सबसे बड़ा मुद्दा तो यह शौचालय का है जो इतने सालों से कभी बनी नहीं पा रहा कई साल से है हर बार आते हैं देखते हैं नहीं कोई काम नहीं करता शौचालय बनते ही नहीं अब क्या पता क्या होगा नहीं फिट है उसमें कि जो शौचालय के लिए कुछ करना नहीं चाहते सरकार तो कह रही मोदी सरकार तो कह रही घर घर में शौचालय दे दिया शौचालय बनना चाहिए तो शौचालय इतना पुराना शौचालय पड़ा हुआ जो जो मेन बनना चाहिए वो तो बन ही नहीं रहा बताओ नहीं भाई साहब ऐसा कुछ नहीं है जनता ने बदलाव का मूड बना लिया है लेकिन आपको मैंने जो मुद्दे बताए हैं कि महंगाई बेरोजगारी भूखमरी जो चल रही है अस्सी करोड़ को जो पाँच किलो राशन दे रहे हैं उसका भी मुद्दा है युवा बेरोजगार है अग्निवीर इन्होंने चला दिया है रेल वेल सेल सब बेच दिया इन्होंने सारा कुछ बेच दिया आगे भी जो बचा है उसको भी बेचने की तैयारी है लोग तो ये भी कह रहे हैं मोदी जी के सामने कौन होगा मोदी जी के सामने तो अभी जो गठबंधन हमारा इंडिया गठबंधन बनाया है ना उसमें डिसाइड होगा जिसको भी लाएंगे वो होगा ऐसा तो भाग गए नीतीश भाग गए ममता दीदी भाग गई ऐसा कुछ नहीं है भाई साहब अभी देखना अभी क्या क्या होता है आएगी कांग्रेस ही ये पक्का है की आना इंडिया गठबंधन है कांग्रेस के नेतृत्व में सरकार बनेगी और कांग्रेस की ही बनेगी इस बार दस साल हो गए इनको मौका दे दिया जनता ने देख लिया और इससे अच्छे ज्यादा दिन युवा नहीं देख सकता महिलाएं नहीं देख सकती कोई नहीं देख सकते अंधभक्त लगे हुए हैं वो लगे रहेंगे लेकिन होना कुछ नहीं है देखो अगर ईवीएम बदल जाता है तो फिर तो कांग्रेस ही आएगी ईवीएम नहीं बदलता बैलेट पेपर में नहीं होता फिर तो बीजेपी ही आएगी बाकी और कुछ नहीं बाकी तो सब बराबर के ही है बीजेपी वाले हमारे भाई बंद हैं For more such videos, subscribe to the NewsX YouTube channel. Hit the bell icon.